a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. We build our identities around the stories we tell ourselves, stories that define who we are and where we're going. For some, entire lives rest on these stories, but when we get stuck in these narrative patterns, we may be doing serious harm to ourselves. Andrew Peek is an entrepreneur and investor who, after a series of unexpected twists and turns in his life, realized that the story he had written for himself was actually holding him back. Today, he explores how he came to this realization and shares why the ability to rewrite our own narratives every day is what leads us to change, growth, and fulfillment. I mean, we've all got a story we like to tell, myself included, so here goes. As a kid, I sang in a pretty decent choir. We'd go around the world performing for popes and presidents. But upon turning teenager, I decided I was going to trade that in for a chance of being cool. So for me, this meant cigarettes, skateboards, petty crime. I'm sure you can fill in the rest. I failed miserably at this particular brand of cool and then proceeded to become target 1A for bullies for quite some time until finally I found a path to relevance by stumbling into a role with nearly universal high school importance, selling drugs. As I crossed into adulthood, that decision and those that came with it nearly cost me everything in my life, everything I had worked for. But as it happened, I was given a second chance by a woman I haven't seen in 14 years, but who is out there in the audience today, Justice Maven Wong. This is where my story begins. I'm sure, no doubt, you tell yours just as well. We've, we are unbelievably skilled, rather, at telling our own story. The progression, the adversity, always managing to convey this sense of triumph in the present moment, and often there's a hopefulness, sometimes even a confidence in what the future has in store for us. We're like these master storytellers, and we, We're our favorite story. But our stories are going to kill us. Already I can tell you they limit us, they hold us down and constrain us. Sometimes they even suffocate us. To their credit, though, at least they're consistent. They all follow the same narrative pattern, what we've come to call the hero's journey. It's just that the hero's journey we see played out on the big screen teaches us that change happens inside the hero while the world around them stays constant. Everyone effectively waits for the hero to be reborn. And every time I see this, I can't help but think to myself, how beautiful would it be if the world worked that way? If it waited for us to come around on our own time to fully embrace our new selves and then step back into the picture with both feet firmly planted on the ground. I'd like to tell you about the most recent time that I had to rewrite my own story. My partners and I were able to achieve something most entrepreneurs consider to be a benchmark of success, especially in tech. We sold our company. And we didn't just sell it to anyone, we sold it to the next great chapter in Canadian technology history. I got to tell you, it was a pretty great story. I don't think I could have written a better script. Sure enough, so the story goes, roughly six months later, I was let go. After a decade of writing my story as a tech entrepreneur, I was fired by the top act in town. It's a long fall. And while it wasn't immediately obvious to me in the moment, there was something beautiful about having the rug pulled out from under me that day. Like a lightness that came from realizing I didn't actually vanish, sorry, I didn't actually vanish by virtue of losing my story. That there in the empty space was an idea of who I might be next. At the same time, It was deeply unsettling. I found the switch from story to idea really challenged my sovereignty. You see, my story had one author with veto power and final say on the interpretation of all the events in my life. When it's a story, that's kind of how it is. We get to choose how we perceive those events, and we do so in a way that best suits us, that leaves the story as much intact as possible. Got bullied as a kid? You pick the reason. Got let go? Ultimately, you're going to decide why that was. Stories force us into these either-or choices where either it fits the script we have for ourselves or it doesn't. But the idea of me, I quickly realize the idea of me isn't built on an either-or at all. It's built on and. 
Instead of getting caught up with whether we're a success or a failure, whether we're right or we're wrong, and reminds us that both are true. In fact, all things new are born this way by standing at the intersection and holding the tension between two choices that already exist so that a third can emerge. And it isn't just true for the idea of me. This is true for all ideas. When you start to tune into it, you can start to see ideas being added to everywhere. Gender, privacy, mental health, democracy. Take any one of these as ideas for a moment and ask yourself whether you remember a time when they were simpler. I know I do. When I was growing up, gender used to mean boy or girl. If you go back just a couple years, mental health used to only imply there was something wrong with you. But then these ideas got bigger. We kept adding to them. They expanded. When you build your identity on a story, it becomes a once and for all discovery. We even talk about people before and after this elusive moment where they quote unquote found themselves. But if you believe yourself to be an idea, then identity becomes a moving target, a never-ending discovery. Not just because the idea of you is always expanding, but because so too are the ideas all around you. Every moment becomes this wonderful chance to recalibrate, to revisit your relationship to another idea. This is the practice, this is growth, this is what growth is. Whether in arrest or getting fired, divorce, disease, the death of a loved one, maybe a failure of some kind, We've all seen our stories interrupted. We don't write these tragic bits into the original script. They're wrenches that are thrown our way that force us to rewrite again and again and again. And I think that's what the idea of me needs to be, a commitment to that rewriting every day. Not because we have to, because we want to, because we love to create and it is infinitely easier to do so without a story dragging along behind. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Toronto, Ontario. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Toronto. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.